and welcome back, and this week has been a little hectic. Uh, real life sometimes is difficult to keep up with. So today we're going to take a slight detour. We're going to do something a little different than my average fare. Uh, since I got the Wang Rider, it's an absolutely gorgeous machine, but we don't have any software for it. And we've got some uh, interesting stuff in the works, but uh, it would be really nice to get the original system disk and see what their uh, word processing software was actually like. So in that vein, I've been spending a lot of time on eBay searching for Wang Writer or Wang Laboratories stuff, and you come across some interesting things. And there was an auction that wasn't related to the Wang Writer at all, but it was for a Wang piece CB that looked pretty big and had no information whatsoever. It was just a complete mystery board. Uh, but they had the little make offer button on the auction, so I made a low ball offer, not expecting to hear anything back. Sure enough, they took my low ball offer. So I bought this mystery PCB for next to nothing on eBay, and well, a week later, here it is. It's Gorgeous, first of all, and if nothing else, it was worth it for the chips that are socketed because there's a lot of really great chips on here. But I'm not one to buy things like this just to salvage pieces off of it. I want to know what this is, and I don't have a clue what it is. Uh, the silk screen gives us a little bit of an idea up here, but man, looking at it, I feel like there's so much more going on than just what the silkscreen is telling us. So today, let's take an in-depth look at what this is, what kind of chips are hiding out on it, and what I think it might be, but I'm most likely way off the mark, and so I'm really hoping that somebody out there uh, is much smarter than me, or recognizes this board, or even just recognizes the form factor and can give me a direction to run it, because I have absolutely no clue what I'm looking at, but I would love to figure out if, if this is part of a larger system, what part is it, and what that larger system is. So let's hop over to the bench and take a look at this board. All right, first things first, it's just an absolutely gorgeous PCB. There is a solder mask on the back side, but no solder mask on the front side, but the silk screen is very interesting, or at least I think it's a silk screen. Uh, it's got this kind of black color painted on it, um, and that makes all of the actual white silk screen for the uh, IC numbers and everything really legible. We can also see that all of the traces are exposed, and that's just absolutely gorgeous. Now, talking about that silk screen, right up here at the top it says, five and a quarter disc control. So there's a good possibility that this is a disc controller card. Uh, and that makes sense because we've got what very obviously looks like uh, disc connectors right here. And so clearly it's controlling the disc somehow. And I also know that it's from 1986 uh, because I pulled both of these uh, ROMs off. This is a 2732 and this is a 2764. I pulled both of them off and I ripped the code off of them just so I could have a backup of it. The code coming off of the uh, 2732 looks very strange. It might be some microcode or addressing related stuff. Uh, but the code coming off of the 2764 actually had a copyright of 1986. Now, in 1986, uh, five and a quarter inch disc control boards were about half or a quarter of the size of this thing. This thing is absolutely massive. And if we take a look at some of the other ICs that are floating around here, I think there's a little more going on than just a disc control board. Uh, notably, well, we've got a full-on Z80 CPU right here. And, well, using a Z80 CPU for a disc controller is not unheard of, but it does seem a little strange to be using a Z80 CPU in conjunction with a P8272A. This is a dedicated single density, dual density floppy controller chip. It's actually the same IC that's used in the Wang Rider. So if a lot of the five and a quarter disc control heavy lifting is being handled by this chip, what's the rest of this stuff doing? 
And right next to the Z80 CPU, we've got two Z80A CTC chips. These are Z80 counter timer circuit chips. And I imagine that disk control is a very big part of this board. So these are probably contributing to that in some way. I don't know, the Z80 architecture is still very new to me. So I'm still learning a lot about it. Uh, the big AMD chip right here is an am 9517 a, and that is a multi-mode DMA controller. So there is some direct memory access control going on. And speaking of memory, there's actually 64K of RAM on this board, and it's right here on the bottom. And these chips are MB8264As, and they are 64K by one bit RAM chips, and there are nine of them. Uh, so that would be the first eight are for the eight bit data bus that's going on through here, and then the ninth one would be a parity bit. So that is a full on CPU, a relatively large amount of RAM, all for a disk control board that already has a dedicated disk controller chip on it. So I don't know, there's some weird stuff going on here. Now, other notable chips are going to be these three right here. Uh, and well, these are all kind of the same. They're uh, HDC 1100s or WD 1100s. Uh, and these are, I believe, MFM generator chips. So that leads credence to the whole disk controller idea. Uh, but this big guy over here is a Datatronic DL6352. And this is a digital delay model. Module. Uh, it looks like it just has a, a couple of uh, inductors and capacitors in it to create a delay. Now there are two different crystal oscillators on the board. There's uh, this Toyocom one over here, which is a 10 megahertz oscillator. And then there is a, a little one down over here that is a four megahertz oscillator. This just really feels like a single board computer to me. And that's actually why I bid on it in the first place. When I looked at the auction and I saw this connector on the back, I thought, great, maybe this is a single board computer that has uh, communication with like floppies and hard drives through these blue plugs here. And then this plug on the back is to a uh, serial RS-232 terminal, because that would be awesome. Because then I could build a single board computer out of it uh, and hook it up to one of the terminals that I have. But when I looked at this connector in person, there wasn't a great picture of it on the auction, it's not a standard DB25 RS-232 serial thing. So I'm probably way off the mark on that. And actually I'm probably way off the mark on everything. It could just be that this is a really fancy disc control board. Uh, it's huge and I am not familiar enough with old uh, uh, disc control boards to know if they need 64K of RAM. That feels like way too much RAM for just a disc control board. Uh, also, if it were just a disc control board, how does it communicate with the rest of the system? Usually they have like a card edge connector or something that plugs into a backplane. And maybe that's what this uh, connector here on the end is. Maybe the backplane has uh, proprietary connectors and it slots in that way or something. I don't know, I, I really wish I did. And uh, Googling all of the numbers that show up on here brings up nothing. And boy, with 64K of RAM and a full on Z80 processor and a dedicated floppy controller kit chip here, it just feels like a single board computer and that's what I really, really want it to be. But who knows, I may be way off the mark and I'm really hoping that one of you guys out there recognizes this board. So if you've watched this video and you've been screaming at the monitor because I've just gotten so many things about it completely wrong, hop in the comments below and let me know. I'm genuinely curious. And if it does have the capability of talking to a terminal or doing something on its own, I would absolutely love to get this thing powered up and see what it can do. Uh, but, well, 
for now, I'm just gonna keep Googling chip stuff here, maybe try to figure out what's going on with the code uh, because this, uh, this code that came off of this ROM chip should be Z80 code and that might be able to give us a little more insight. But, uh, well, this was a little bit of a shorter episode. Uh, like I said, real life's been real hectic lately. Uh, but next week, we'll be right back on the Centurion, and I have some really exciting stuff that's going on with that. So I really hope to see you guys then, and thank you so much for watching.